Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to cover how you can record or capture gameplay footage with little to no performance loss on Linux. I'll also cover how you can edit and render the final video for the best results when you're going to be uploading it to YouTube. So for this particular video I'm going to be covering two pieces of software. The first one is OBS Studio which is what I'm going to be using to capture and record the game in question and Caden Live in order to edit and render the finished video for uploading to YouTube. Now both pieces of this software are open source and cross-platform. You can replicate this particular setup on both Windows and Mac OS. I'm going to start with OBS Studio. So OBS Studio is a very customizable piece of software. It supports hardware encoding technologies such as NVENC and VA-API, allows you to assign keyboard shortcuts, and also features multiple input sources for audio and video. Now you can usually install OBS from your distribution's repositories if you do want a version that comes pre-installed with the accelerated video encoder libraries such as NVENC and VA-API, then I recommend you install the Snap version of OBS Studio. So the first time you launch OBS, you'll find that it will prompt you with a wizard, and this is basically to determine the best settings for either recording or streaming, and the result you'll get will be based on your particular hardware. But if you choose the wrong options or want to change this in the future, you can do. Now in terms of the interface for OBS Studio, it can seem overwhelming at first, but the main sections you'll be concerned with are the sources section down here, as well as the controls and the audio mixer. So under the sources section, you can click the add image, and that will allow you to add either audio or, or video sources. For example, if you're using a microphone, you'll probably find that you're going to be adding the audio in capture pulse audio option. Alternatively, for video capture, you have the option of either window capture or screen capture. Now, my recommendation is when it comes to recording video games, you want to be using the window capture over the screen capture. And the reason for that is that the latter, in this case the screen capture, will incur a performance hit as you technically be recording the entire screen as well as the active window. On the other hand, if you use Windows capture, you're only recording the active window and as a result does not incur any performance loss. So when it comes to your encoding settings, it's really down to your system's capabilities. However, you do want to be aiming at recording at your monitor's native resolution and ideally at 30 or 60 FPS. You can find all these settings if you open up the settings menu at the top and then go to video. In addition, you may want to adjust the output parameters where you can specify the recording quality, the file format, as well as what encoder to use. So for example, on my particular system, I use the NVENC encoder, so that what that does is it pushes most of the encoding side of things to my GPU. But if you don't have that option, then you can choose the, I suppose it's the second best option, which is software low CPU usage preset. Or alternatively, if you've got other hardware such as AMD or Intel, just choose whatever the equivalent is for that. Although not strictly required, you can use keyboard shortcuts to pause the recording, if you don't want to manually click the buttons found in the control center. For example, what I typically do is if the game has a loading screen, I'll have a keypad on my keyboard where I will basically pause the recording until the loading screen's over, or alternatively, mute the microphone during cutscenes. You can also use a night, night gate with your microphone, and again, this will cut down on the amount of key presses or the noise you've heard when you type your keys, and also the button noise when you're using a controller. Now the audio mixer down here at the bottom basically just shows you a preview of how loud the recorded footage will be. And this is a good indication of whether or not you need to increase or decrease the volume of the game or adjust the gain of your microphone. Now some games are naturally loud, so you will need to reduce the volume in-game, otherwise your voice will be drowned out. So as a general rule, you want to avoid the audio if possible going into the red area, and also make sure you disable the mic slash auxiliary option down here as well. Otherwise, what will happen is it will record twice, so you'll have echo in your recording. And if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, I recommend that you disable flipping in the X server application. Otherwise, what you'll find is you'll encounter artifacts when the video is recording. You can do this through the OpenGL settings here. And it doesn't tick where it says allow flipping. Either way, OBS Studio is a great versatile piece of equipment for recording or capturing footage on Linux. So whilst OBS will do the job for capturing the footage, you still need a piece of software for editing and rendering, 
And for that purpose, I recommend that you install and use Caden Live, which once again is open source, supports hardware acceleration, and is cross-platform. So you can usually install Caden Live from your distribution's repository using a package manager, or alternatively, if you wish, you can use a flat pack, a snap, or a app image. Now the interface of Caden Live may seem intimidating at first, but it does become quite logical once you get used to it. The basic workflow goes like this. You take an existing clip that you've recorded, drop it into the project bin over here, wait for it to process, and then once it's processed, you drop it into the timeline down here. From there, you can select different parts of the track you wish to edit, adjust the volume using the mixer, or add effects under the timeline slash effects section here. Once you're happy with the final project, you can begin rendering. Caden Live has a list of rendering profiles based on the file size, Kodak format, quality and resolution. But for the best results and to cut down the overall rendering times, I tend to use the GPU section. Now, just a couple of things to denote when you're uploading videos to YouTube. Unless you upload the video at a resolution that is 1440p or higher, you'll find that your video will be encoded using a lower quality codec called AVC. Now, this is absolutely fine for tutorial content, but for anything that has quick motion scenes, such as a video game, it's going to look terrible. Alternatively, what you can do is you can upload at 1440p or higher. Instead, if you upload at 1440p or higher, you will get the VP09 codec, which does not suffer the same quality issues. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can naturally record the video at 1440p, or if you wish, you can upscale the video to 1440p when you render it. So to do that in Caden Live, you click the More Options, and click the Rescale option here, and then type in the resolution, which in this case would be 1440. On Stunt, specify the out output location, give it a suitable name, and then click the Render to File button at the bottom. The time it'll take to render this video will depend entirely on your hardware you have, the resolution of the video, the bitrate, as well as the file size of the original content. Now just bear in mind that no matter how good the quality of the hardware you have, the resolution of the video, just bear in mind that no matter how good the quality of the original recorded or rendered video is, when you upload it to YouTube, due to the processing that YouTube does on their end, the quality will always suffer. So with that, I've covered two open source tools that will allow you to record, capture and render game footage without taking a performance hit on Linux. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you did find this video helpful, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye now.